welcome to lecture 1c in this lecture our focus would be on instruction encoding in the last video we were talking about instruction set architecture what an instruction means and what are the different types of addressing modes and in the first lecture video we have seen that upon fetching an instruction from memory we are going to decode it so the few bit patterns inside the instruction will determine what kind of operation it is and few bits will tell what is the addressing mode and where are the operands available and all to facilitate such a kind of an operation during decoding wherein the understanding of instruction is been done at the time of representing of an instruction also there has to be a careful process by which what bit represents what operation so we'll discuss more about this in instruction encoding today as discussed earlier an instruction is the most basic unit of command and instructions are typically words in the language of a computer where isa is the vocabulary and we have seen that there are different types of instructions some are arithmetic and logic instructions which are carried out in the alu and then we have the data transfer instructions and then we have the control transfer instruction or program control instructions we know that all these instructions are basically represented using ones and zeros so when you look at an instruction it consists of a sequence of ones and zeros how do you understand whether an instruction is a data transfer instruction or it's an alu instruction even if it is an alu instruction whether it represents an add operation or a subtraction operation what is the kind of addressing modes so we have to to understand the pattern of what the meaning of the bits prior to that we already discussed in the last lecture about an instruction consists of an opcode and then few operands now depending upon the encoding that is been done and depending upon the architectural level complexity there are two broader classification on instruction set architecture so prior to going to encoding let us try to understand those two classifications so as discussed the two kind of broader classifications are risk architecture and cisc architecture risc stands for reduced instruction set computer and cisc stands for complex instruction set computer so the basic idea is in the risc the architecture is designed in such a way that for the execution of a task which consists of multiple instruction reduce the cycles per instruction at the cost of number of instruction so a given task upon translating into machine level language on a risc computer then you have multiple instructions and almost all of them would be very simple instructions so each instruction will take only few number of cycles whereas the cisc counterpart what they try to do there is attempting to minimize the number of instructions per program but at the cost of increasing the average number of cycles per instruction so here we have few number of instructions and each instruction will take larger number of clock cycles so the hardware will take care of the complexity the other aspect is in the case of risc we use simple instructions with simple encoding what do you mean by simple encoding when you talk about simple encoding we know that there are few fixed bits inside the instruction that will be determining whether what is the opcode what is the operation what is the addressing modes so that simple encoding is one aspect by which we can always look at certain predetermined bits to understand what the operation is all about and typically risc computer will permit only few addressing modes and for a given task upon compilation onto a risc machine it will generate more number of instructions so large it will occupy more amount more amount of space inside memory that is called a large code base whereas if you look at the counterpart the cisc counterpart instructions can be of varying complexity there can be very simple instructions as well as there can be some instructions which are relatively complex whereas if you see in the case of a risc all instructions are relatively simple and almost all instructions would be of uniform length let's say we talk about four byte instructions in risc everything will be four byte so for simplicity sake we represent each instruction whether it's a data transfer instruction or whether it's an arithmetic instruction everything would be represented in the same uniform length such that my program counter updation can always happen at a constant value let us imagine in the case of a risc instruction set architecture if it is designed in such a way that every instruction is only 4 byte 
then program counter always get updated is by PC equal to PC plus 4 because we know that the next instruction is located at PC plus 4 and once after that plus 4. So, there is always an, an offsetting because each instruction is encoded into 32 bit or 4 byte. So, that all subsequent instructions beginning happens at multiples of 4. Such a kind of a uniformity is not generally incorporated in the CISC. There can be some instruction which may take only 1 byte, some may take 3 bytes, some may take 8 bytes, some may take 15 bytes like that. So, the updation of the program counter also depends upon the length of the current instruction. That means, typically in CISC architecture, the instruction length also can be varying. Based upon the complexity of instruction, sometimes you can be have two memory operands, sometimes one register plus one memory. So, all these will take variable amount of space in order to represent. So, that is called variable encoding that we told and more addressing modes are being generally supported and then for a given task, since it is going to represent in terms of fewer number of instructions, it will have small code base and but the architecture would be slightly complex in order to handle that. So, this table we give you a rough summary on the comparison between the CISC and the RISC. In the CISC we have a really complex hardware and even if uh, we give them different level of complexity of instruction, the hardware would be able to understand and execute. Here the compiler has to break down the task into set of smaller simpler instructions. So, the compiler has to do little bit of more work. And here we have multiple instruction sizes and multiple instruction formats and RISC typically follow instructions of same type with fewer format. CISC can handle with few number of the registers in the architecture because some of the operation can be done with memory also as one of the operand. For example, for an ALU operation, one of the source operand can be from register and the second one can be from memory. Whereas, in the case of a RISC, since we want more of the operands to be residing in the registers, the number of register support also has to be high. Try to correlate with the load store architecture or the register register architecture that we learned in the previous video, where we talk about ALU operations can be done if and only if both the source operands are available in registers. So, typically load store architecture is the one that is been used in RISC. And to support more variety of operation, more diversity of operation, typically it, the system has to support more addressing modes. Whereas in the case of RISC, it has to settle down with the fewer and simpler addressing modes. And here extensive use of microprogramming given an instruction upon decoding, it will generate lot of control signals which will typically tell the subtask associated with an instruction. So, here the focus is more on the compiler, compiler break down the task, here the hardware will have multiple sub control operations which will facilitate that. And instruction will take varying amount of cycle time, some may complete in 1 cycle, some may take 5 cycles, some may take 10 cycles and here typically it is roughly more or less the same time on an average of 1 cycle if you do it in a pipeline basis. And uh, CISC the problem is since uh, some of the instruction may take fewer number of cycles, some may take more number of cycles, pipelining all of the execution may be difficult, but still it is been done. Whereas, in the case of a RISC architecture, since it supports only few number of operations, pipelining is considered to be easy. We will learn about the pipelining concept of the architecture little later in this course. So, now we had a quick summary of what is RISC and what is the CISC architecture, the broader comparisons in terms of the addressing modes, in terms of the length of the instruction, in terms of the size of the code that is being generated, in terms of execution time as well. Now, we move to the instruction format. So, format of an instruction typically means what is the layout of the bits inside an instruction. So, typically we know that an instruction consists of an opcode and few operands. So, which are the bits that represents opcode and which are the bits that represent operand, how many operands are there. So, some in some kind of instruction for example, in implicit addressing mode or in a stack addressing mode that we learnt previously, we need not explicitly specify where the operand is. So, how do you specify it? What is the addressing modes? And sometimes uh, uh, for CISC architecture and all, we can have multiple instruction format. It need not be the first n bits always be the opcode. For certain category of instruction, maybe the last few bits may be the opcode. So, it is not like a fixed encoding, it can be variable encoding as well. So, as you can see that your instruction format is been given. So, there will be few bits which will represent the opcode. So, how many bits and how many bits are used for representing the operands? Are there something else that you need to specify something like the addressing mode and uh, things like that? 
Now, when you talk about allocation of bits, when I talk from the perspective of an instruction designer, first I have to see that what are the number, how many addressing modes are generally being supported by the hardware. Accordingly, I have to reserve few bits to, to, to facilitate the addressing modes and certain instruction may have three operands, some may have two operands, some may have only one operand and sometimes I have one register operand and one memory operand. So, what are the number of operands that are being supplied or supported and sometimes certain operands are in register and memory. So, do you require certain bits in order to classify whether the operand is from register or memory and, and if it is from the register then how many number of registers, if it is from memory what is the range of address. For example, I am talking about a 1 megabyte memory then it requires 20 bits to uniquely address one of the location. If I have 64 so registers then I require 6 bits to represent one of the register. So, depending on number of registers and the address range the number of bits used to represent a register name as well as an address location it is there and what is the granularity of address are we talking in terms of bytes or 2 byte or how big is my one word. So, everything is going to be part of uh, this design process which will tell what is the split up of the entire instruction in terms of bit wise granularity. So, consider this case where a 16 bit instruction that is being specified here we have total of uh, uh, 32 bits that is been given. Now, in this 32 bit there are some kind of a split up. So, you can just imagine whatever is shown in the blue color if I assume that to be an opcode and then these 2 bits may be telling the addressing modes the green one and then maybe think of a case the, the next few bits what is been shown in the black color can be considered as a register and this you can talk it as an immediate value or some memory locations. So, reference the same 32 bit I can have a different representation I am I now changing the opcode. So, this means maybe I am talking about only about it. So, register operation this is the addressing mode and uh, now this has to be classified as the registers that is been used. So, this can be one of the operand this can be the address of the next operand and this can be address of the resultant operand and this may be some extra control bits. So, the same 32 bit I am going to understand it differently in case 1 as well as in case 2. So, if there is an understanding that the first 8 bits represent the opcode. So, this may represent a load operation and this sometimes can represent an add operation with the contents with the 3 registers. Here loading I have to specify where to load and from where to from which address I have to load. So, in this way it has to be interpreted in a different way. Now, considering the length of the instruction some instru in some processors instruction length is for 8 bits, some are 16 bits, some are 24 bit. So, what are the parameters that are going to, uh, to impact the length from a designer perspective. So, the first one always instructions are going to contain some operands inside it. So, registers. So, the number of registers that you have and the address range to which uh, my memory is interfaced this will have some impact on it with respect to the size of that. So, what is a memory organization? What is the granularity at which I am going to access the memory? Is it in terms of words or byte or what is the granularity? That will have a significant say which will determine the length of an instruction and second is memory size. Are you going to tell the full absolute address or you are going to tell an offset within one segment only and what is the bus structure? What is the capacity of the bus? So, if the bus capacity is 16 bit and if my instruction is of 16 bit it is fine because in one fetching I can get the entire instruction. What if my instruction is 32 bit and my bus capacity is 16 then it requires two fetching or two consecutive transfer of data from the memory into the processor in order to transfer an instruction. So, what I am talking here is you have a processor and then you have a memory and let us say the bandwidth that is connecting is only 16 bit and if you have a 32 bit instruction we know that even if the instruction is stored in memory in uh, in 32 bits it cannot be transferred to processor for during a fetching in a single stage. So, I have to divide your 32 into 2 units of 16 16 each. So, the first 16 is been brought and the next 16 is been brought. So, in that way the bus structure also plays a significant role in determining what is going to be the instruction length and sometimes the CPU's complexity can the CPU decode very complex kind or very long instruction that is also one of this parameter. 
so memory size memory organization the register capacity all these factors will play a role in determining the length of the instruction should i go for an 8 bit instruction or a 16 bit instruction or a 24 bit instruction like that so like what you see here you have a 32 bit value now this is 16 bit maybe i'm talking about a memory of 64 kb which can be represented using 16 what if my memory was 1 MB, then in that case the 16 bit is not enough, I need to expand this to 20 bits. So, does that mean my instruction length will become 36 or can I reduce something in this here? So, these are the parameters that are going to affect the length of the instruction. So, one example, so PDP 11 was one of the old standard processor where they were using 16 bit instruction format. So, there are different types of instruction 1, 2, C, these are all categories of instruction and in all these cases you can see that there is a 4 bit opcode here and a 6 bit used for representing source and another 6 bit for representing the destination and typically this uh, 6 consists of 3 plus 3, 1 3 bit is used for the addressing modes and next 3 bit is going to talk about registers. So, there were totally 8 registers this 3 bit will tell what is the kind of addressing mode that I am using and this 3 bit will tell the name of the registers. So, this is same thing is applicable to source and destination and sometimes I use only the register name and then some values where the opcode number of bits are more. In some instruction it is an 8 bit opcode, sometimes here also 8 bit opcode, sometimes 10 bit opcode. So, different category of instructions were supported by PDP and there are some instructions where apart from 16 then when you are talking about certain operations wherein two memory operands are involved your actual instruction length is going to be 48 bits where the first 16 bit will talk about opcode source and destination and the remaining 32 bits will talk about two other memory addresses as well. So, this is just to give an overview for different processors the instruction encoding format would be different just to understand that here we are not following a uniform encoding scheme. There are some places where we have 4 bit opcode, sometimes it is 7 bit opcode, sometimes it is 13 bit opcode. So, few bits in the pattern will tell what is the opcode length and all. So, for our course since we are not focusing specifically on any microprocessor, we are not learning this is just an example to show that how instructions are being represented and what are the various bit field indicating there. Now, let us look into few example questions and try to understand. Say processor has 16 distinct instructions that means they are called unique opcodes and 32 general purpose registers. A 24 bit instruction word has an opcode, two register operand and an immediate operand. How many bits are possible for the immediate operand field? So, this is a question where I am talking about a processor will support 16 distinct instructions. So, 16 distinct instruction means then there are 16 bits that are going 16 then instruction which means 4 bits will uniquely represent the opcode and I have 32 general purpose registers. So, this is the 4 bit for the opcode let us say if I talk the instruction of total 24 bits which consists of an opcode field and then a 24 bit instruction has an opcode and 2 register operand field operand 1 and operand 2 and then since I have 32 registers to represent one register I require 5 5 bit each. So, that is why this 5 5 and what. So, 4 bit for opcode, 5 bit for one register name, 5 bit for the next register name and then here the question is then how many bits are possible for an immediate operand. Since the total is 24 out of which 4 is gone for opcode, 5 5 bits are gone for operand 1 and operand 2 and that makes it total of 14 already used. So, the remaining 10 bit can be used for uh, the immediate operand field. Okay. Now, let us look into example 2, a RISC processor has 16 general purpose registers, it is operate on a 16 bit instruction and uh, has 3 types of instruction, they are the register type let us call it as R, a memory type instruction call it as M and a branch type instruction called as B. The register type instruction has three register operands and a memory type instruction has 
an 8 bit memory offset field and a single register operand and the branch instruction has two register operands. So, it is going to talk about three category of instruction. Now, if there are 8 unique opcodes for register type instructions and 6 unique opcodes for memory type instruction, what is the maximum number of unique opcodes possible for a branch type instruction illustrate the encoding pattern. So, it has been told that there are 16 general purpose registers that has been told 16 general purpose registers. So, we use 4 bits to represent them uniquely represent them and you have a 16 bit instruction there are 3 types the R type, the M type and the B type, register type, memory type and the branch type. What is happening in R type? In an R type we have 3 register operands and each register operand is 4 bit. So, 4 bit for first operand, 4 bit for second operand and 4 bit for third operand together they will take already 12 bits and then it has 8 opcodes. In the M type they use a 4 bit register operand and 8 bit memory operand. So, that together constitute 12 bits and another 6 unique opcodes are there and in the branch type we have 2 register operands. So, 4 bit and 4 bit. Now, they are asking how many possible opcodes are there. Let us try to put in this problem in this way, if it is an R type, so totally 16 bit instruction it is already mentioned. Now, for the R type, since there are 3 register operands, each will consume 4 bit each, let us call these are the 3 register operands out of the 16 bit. So, 12 bit is already consumed 4 plus 4 plus 4 that is 12, remaining is so only 4 bit left, this 4 bit out of that 8 opcodes are there. So, only 3 bits are required to uniquely represent those 8 opcodes. So, let us start the MSB as 0, let us keep it as such and then use the remaining 3 bits 0 0 0 0 to 0 1 1 1. So, the first 0 is same and this is my do not care bits and this if you put all possible combination this represents my 8 opcodes. So, 8 unique opcodes. So, the meaning is if I start my MSB as 0, it indicates it is an R type, the next 3 bits will tell what is the unique opcode that represents and the next 12 bits will tell what are the 3 register operands. Now, when you go to the M type, let me put it as 1, so zeros all combinations are over here. Now, I start with 1, the remaining is x x x. And then if you look at that for a memory type instruction we have an 8 bit memory offset and a 4 bit register. So, 8 plus for 12. Now, the only remaining one is if the MSB is 1. So, all this 12 is used these 3 bit combination with an MSB 1 can have these possible range because I have 6 unique opcodes required. So, now there are few that is been left out from this. Let us see in the B type what are the possibilities that are left out 1. 110 and 111 is not part of this range. So, put that and for the B type we have 2 register operands. So, they will constitute remaining 8 bits, these are the initial 4 bits. So, there are another 4 bits that are left unused. So, how many opcodes are possible for 1110 and then 4 other bits we have 16 possible combinations for 1111 with 4 x cases we have another 16 opcodes. So, in total, total of 32 opcodes are possible, unique opcodes are possible. So, what is the basic method by which we try to solve? Given a question, first we write down the number of bits in the instruction and the R type definition is being given, try to fit in the instructions based upon the operand length. Here we have 16 registers, so 4 bit is the register length and accordingly fit in these values. So, certain bits are used to identify the category of instruction. In this case, we use 0, it can be used as 1 also. So, 0 and 1 will differentiate whether it is R type or not. So, if it is MSB 0, we assume that it is R type. If MSB is 1, it can be M type or B type. Now, if MSB 1 and the remaining 3 bits, if they belong to this range, then they belong to M type. If they belong to these 2 ranges, then they belong to the B type category and these are the possible subcodes. So, with 1 1 1 0 we have 16 combinations with 1 1 1 1 another 16 combination and that make it total of 
32. We now take one more example before we wind up for today's uh, lecture. In this case, we are talking about another processor and few more classification just like the previous one. A processor has 64 registers and uses a 2 byte instruction format. So, here also it is a 16 bit instruction format for all its instruction. It has two types of instruction here I type and R type. The I type instruction contains an opcode, a register name and a 4 bit immediate value. The R type instruction contains an opcode and two register names. So, if there are 16 distinct opcodes for I type, then how many distinct opcodes are possible for an R type instruction? So, let us try to understand what are the data given. We have 64 general purpose registers, that means 6 bits are used to represent them, 16 bit instruction which are classified as I type and R type, and then we have the I type which represents an opcode field, a 6 bit register, and a 4 bit immediate value. So, 6 plus 4, 10. The remaining is 16 bit opcode, out of that 16 opcodes are there for I type. For R type, there is an opcode field plus 6 bits used for first register operand, 6 bit used for the second register operand. So, 6 plus 6 12. Now, we have to find out how many maximum opcodes are there. Let me summarize the data that we have it already. Now, if you take the first one I type, so total 16 bits are there and then in the I type, we have a 4 bit immediate value and a 6 bit register name. So, 6 plus 4 is 10. So, already 10 gone, then remaining 6 bits. Let us start with 0, 0, 0 like that. But the here I have only 16 opcodes. So, only 4 bits are required to represent 16 opcodes. So, this if you try all possible combination of x, 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 that will give you from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 16 ops that is already been specified. So, the most significant bit is not used, let us put it as 0, 0. Now, in R type, what are the unused patterns? 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. These combinations are never used in the case of an I type. Now, in the case of R type, we have two register operands, 6 bit, 6 bit each. So, that will make it total of 12 and out of 16, now only 4 is left. This is not like the previous question where the opcode size was fixed. So, now only 4 bits out of these 2 bits are like this. Now, there are only 2 bit positions where I can play around. So, this x x can be filled as 0 0 to 1 1 that make it 4 combinations, but there are 3 different levels for 0 1 beginning of 0 1 I can have 4 combinations for x x beginning with 1 0 another 4 combinations of x x and beginning with 1 1 another com two, 4 combinations of x x. So, that makes it 3 into 4 12 opcodes are possible. So, in this case what we try to do, we try to fix up the first I type instruction and find out the unused pattern. The unused pattern is something that start with 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 and the only 2 bits of flexibility I have because this will consume total of 12 bits and with this 2 bits, we will be able to find out what are the maximum combinations. So, in this case 12 unique opcodes is possible in the case of an R type instruction which already will consume 12 bits for the 2 register operands. And out of the 4 bit opcode that has been left, that is 16 bit combinations, you 12 opcodes are possible. The other 4 will be going for because something that is starting with 0, 0, it is already going for uh, the I type instruction. So, with this, we are coming to the end of uh, this particular lecture also. Let us try to summarize what we did in today's lecture. We started with the concept of what is the difference between the RISC and the CISC architecture in terms of the length of the instruction, in terms of the complication of instruction, the execution time, the addressing modes, the encoding pattern everything. We were trying to understand the basic differences in what way one is taking more code size, less code size. And then we were focusing on instruction formatting and uh, how, what are the each bits represent. We had a case study on PDP 11 and then we solved out few examples which will give you some idea on how to work out with similar problems, wherein some architectural features, the addressing modes, uh, the category of instructions, everything was given and we were trying to figure in out an instruction pattern. So, with that we conclude our lecture on instruction encoding. Thank you.